In 2013, YouTube was starting to gain a lot more attention from new onlookers around the internet. With the rising amount of attention on YouTube, a multitude of content creators such as Smosh and Ryan Higa were at the top of the charts. And with the release of Vine a year back, YouTube was full of popular videos and trends. One of the most prominent genres was reaction videos. Now for a quick explanation of what a reaction video is, a reaction video is a video in which people react to something. This can be either like a regular video on the internet, music videos, and stuff like that. One of the biggest reasons for why this particular subsection of content was favored by viewers was that the person watching it can see the person's reaction to what exactly was going on in that video. Some reaction videos showed people reacting to different videos, often with humor, or expressing genuine reaction within them, which is why it still makes them popular to this day. However, the genre has been widely criticized for a prominent amount of reasons such as the content creator not actually providing a reaction to the video, but instead just sitting through it or either watching the video while they eat their food on livestream, or forcing their reaction to make it sound like it's their real reaction to the content. For this video, I will be addressing a content creator on YouTube who does both of these things and has a mountain of controversy under her name. They have a history of falsely flagging videos that are critical of them, so for this video, I will be trying my best to hold back the petty insults. Rest assured, I will not need them. If you already know who this pathetic loser is, then you already hate them. And for those who aren't exactly aware of who they are, then by the end of this video, you will hate them. Meet Foxy the Fox, 110. A quite small content creator who's been getting popular recently due to her YouTube shorts, and not for her actual content. She seemed to be gaining quite the attention from these shorts, and a matter of fact, it's grown her channel to 2,000 subscribers, and I imagine it will probably hit 3,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Today in this video, I will criticize Foxy and share my thoughts about her and her content. My friend Winter and I will be examining the various controversies that surround her name, so buckle up. For today, we'll be dissecting the carcass of Foxy the Fox 110. Foxy the Fox 110 is a 23-year-old woman who started doing YouTube for quite a long time. It's currently unknown how long she was doing YouTube for, but she eventually confirms herself that she was doing YouTube when she was 16. But she used to have a channel beforehand with over at least 1,200 subscribers, but she had to delete it due to a reason that she didn't want to disclose. After having to start fresh on October 11, 2020, she managed to get herself over to 2,000 subscribers, which is if not pretty much double the amount of subs that she had before. She wouldn't start making videos a month later where she would start uploading her intro and outro concepts for her channel. The first aspects of her content would be reaction and commentary videos, but a little later on though she would decide to go 100% on reaction videos. Her content on YouTube Shorts would be her uploading tempo videos, which would garner her a lot of attention on YouTube. Quite a lot more attention than she usually gets on our normal content, which isn't really that good, but we'll talk about that later. With Foxy having a lot of time on her hands, she implements a lot of time into her channel by posting at least 6 videos per day. Quite a lot of videos compared to what I can output, but it's mainly me because I like to put effort and care into my videos so you guys can enjoy them. Also, I would like to point out real quick, with her putting out so many reaction videos in just a singular day, it could be counted against YouTube's spam policy. But hey, that's just my opinion. Eventually, a little later on her YouTube history, people would start to realize that her content and controversies would be the biggest talking points of criticism. As stated beforehand, we will be criticizing Foxy on everything that's been surrounding her so far, and bringing up some points that nobody seemed to have touched on so far at the moment. One thing I do want to criticize her on, which if not is a very prominent criticism, is her content. Having entertaining content engages the viewer to look at your other videos, and they might even go as far to give you support. People who implement effort into their content might end up getting a lot more traction and support in the algorithm. However, the opposite of that spectrum is Foxy. Foxy has her eyes set on being a popular figure on YouTube, However, is what you consider to be a very boring content creator in the landscape of YouTube. This is Foxy's content though, mainly just crapped out reaction videos that go under the algorithm mainly because people are not interested in watching videos that get uploaded the 5-6 to six times a day on YouTube. 
But the biggest gripe with these videos is that the content doesn't really implement any actual reactions or transformative content in their reaction videos, the lack of editing, which causes the video to have dead audio, and the most uncomfortable silence in the video. And with the debate of reaction videos spiraling, it might even be considered that her videos constitute stealing. Like, I obviously don't own the content. It's not like it's copyrighted by me or anything. But I'm just saying that these reactions don't really serve to put any kind of reaction to that content and I might take a little peek into her shorts content. So, first things first, the vast majority of the content created is her letting YouTube videos play while she watches with the face cam on. The most you'll get in the video of her reaction is her snorting a ton in the video a repeated amount of times and interjecting points that literally everyone knows. The video she watches usually bugs out, lags, or has a 3-4 to four second delay, which causes people to lose interest, and she adds absolutely nothing or any relevant information when it comes to commentary, and the content isn't qualified to be transformative whatsoever. To prove my point about the lack of transformative content implemented in her videos, I have sampled from two of Foxy's recent reaction videos, where she reacts to the video without changing it in any way, shape, or form. Now for this research, I will be excusing the intro and the outro of her video, because we'll be focusing on when she is reacting to the video. One of the videos that she reacted to was from Darman, and it's titled, Waitress Hospitalizes Customer. What happens next is shocking. When she is reacting to the video, there are two parts in that video where she stops the video to talk about it. Each part is 7 seconds long. The timestamps are from 2 minutes and 44 seconds through 2 minutes and 51 seconds. That's the time when she gives her reaction. And the other is 6 minutes and 56 seconds, crossing through 7 minutes and 3 seconds. All of these added up are 14 seconds on a 12 minute and 23 second video. Now if we divide 14 seconds to 12 minutes and 23 seconds, which is approximately 743 seconds, you will get 0.018% of transformative content that Foxy has implemented in the video. Throughout the video, she had used a total of three words. 30 words in a 12 minute video. That is roughly 2.5 words a minute. The next video she has is called Foxy's Approval Season 2 43. <laughs> Season 2? What the fuck? Throughout the video, all of the clips of her reacting are a second to two seconds long, and they span from a few seconds to a minute long when she adds another form of reaction into the video. Now, if we add up all of the seconds watched in that video, that adds up to a total of 9 seconds of content. If we divide 9 seconds to 4 minutes and 32 seconds, which is 272 seconds, you will get 0.033% of transformative content that Foxy has added on. If roughly 1% of your video is your own content, your content is fucking garbage. This is the saddest excuse of a reaction video I have ever seen. There's nothing really said in the video most of the time. You're not adding on to the videos you react to. You're not criticizing them. You're not really doing anything that fits within the guise of fair use. This isn't reacting to videos, this is just re-uploading them. Like, you could have easily just made a comment on the video explaining how much you agree to it. You didn't need to make a fucking video giving to little to no information. But hey, on the bright side, the most informative content you'll get of Foxy is her snorting a ton in her videos. <laughs> like, it's so bad to where I was primarily just enjoying the video she was watching instead of her reaction. The only time I would watch her react to it is when she would sniff over and over again and just interject one-word sentences that could be easily summed up in a fucking community post. I know I have stated it twice, but I felt as if this is a good criticism to levy against Foxy. Also, another thing I want to state is whenever she does a commentary on someone, she never really provides any form of context on what exactly the fuck is going on. She just makes an intro, jumps into the reaction, and acts like the audience is aware of what's going on when they clearly aren't. Like, the least you could have done is provide context so people wouldn't be confused. And even if you try to listen in to the videos of what's going on in her reaction, you can't exactly hear what they're saying because Foxy's audio output is so fucking low. Alright, next we're going to look at <laughs> Take it away. Oh shit. Here we go again. Yep. Like, why couldn't you have just downloaded the video, cut up the video of the stuff you want to talk about, and commentate over it with stills or gameplay or whatever the fuck? That would have made your content a little bit more respected, and people would actually appreciate that you're implementing effort into your content. 
Now, if I were these content creators like Darman, I wouldn't give her channel a copyright strike because that's just a dick move. Instead, I think I would give it a copyright claim so that I could collect the ad revenue from it. Now, I'm not really sure if she's monetized, I highly doubt she is. However, she could be making money off that, which is a very shitty thing considering that she doesn't really transform the content. Like, sure, she'll transform the content in her commentary videos, which is rare, but when you look at the other videos in her catalog, you can come to find that she just sits there and doesn't really react to it. I really like the part where you played my video in its entirety and then didn't really react to it, just kind of sat there. I also like the part where you added virtually no insight, you just kind of rambled on for about five minutes and missed the point entirely. Pretty brilliant how you played the entire video in your channel. It's like it's a one-stop shop. Why bother going to my channel to watch that video when you can just watch that and your reaction? The main point I'm trying to say is that if you're not going to add any kind of criticism, commentary, or any form of transformative content, just please mute your mic, because I don't want to watch the video you're watching and then hear, <laughs> oh, fuck, god damn it. I was trying to emphasize my point a little bit better, but then I actually fucked up my nose. So thanks, Foxy, for, you know, doing that to me. Expect a killing video tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> now on to my second point of why I don't like her content, and it's because of her video editing. Although video editing isn't really too important when it comes down to the actual content creation process, it's an important step when it comes down to the creation and production of your video. It allows content creators to blend images, sounds, or even clips to make a cohesive flow for the video to get their point across. And it allows you to add effects to tell a story that you want to tell the audience who is watching your video. Basically, in short, video editing helps the video production better. It doesn't need to be special when it comes down to it, but it shows people that you take your time when it comes to making your content. I'm not one to talk about video editing, but fuck man, her video editing is terrible. When you watch a Foxy video, it's like there's no editing that's like actually implemented into making her videos. To illustrate my point further of how bad her editing is, when she was reacting to one of Mr. Blocky's videos, her mom came in when she was reacting to it. Sorry about that. That's my mom telling me something. Let me just continue. Now, usually when something like that happens, the creator could easily just cut it off, like, edit it out, and they go like, Oh, don't worry, guys. It's just technical difficulties or whatever. Sorry about that. There were some difficulties. But anyways, let's continue. The classic YouTube bullshit. I know I've said this before, but if she wants to react to a video, why doesn't she just download the video on her phone? take random images of cartoon characters or whatever, and then cut and clip the parts that you're going to react to with your cartoon stills. Like, sure, it's really fucking dumb, but it's better than what you're doing right now, respectfully. It's not like she doesn't have a video editor when it comes down to it, considering that every time you watch her videos, she has an intro of some form at the start of her videos, and then it just cuts down to, like, her screen recording of her watching someone eat ketchup or some shit. And then some portions of her videos, she'll edit out technical difficulties that happen in the video. I wonder if it's because her mom walked in on her doing her dumbass reaction videos. Now, the thing is, there isn't a problem if someone's not good when it comes down to editing videos. Like, we all start somewhere. Like, I wasn't good when I first started using Premiere Pro, and then I eventually started to learn how it was used. Not all of us have spare time when it comes down to learning how to make edits on Premiere Pro. And not all of us have the skills necessary to edit videos, so we usually simplify them so it's easier for us, or get someone else to do it. But considering that Foxy usually tries to get six videos uploaded a day on her channel, you can definitely quite tell that the content won't be really a, much of a masterpiece to look at, and their reactions aren't really going to be that great when it comes down to it. I know it sounds like I'm just making a big deal out of nothing, but I just get really annoyed out of people making this dumb content, and then when they get criticized for their bad content, they will go off about how those people are haters, and they're just jealous of their success. 
It's absolutely fucking ridiculous. And the thing is, is that Foxy has done this a few times before. It's not like the only time she's done this. I personally just don't understand why it's so hard for her to take something as simple as criticism. Like, I get she might have some form of, like, learning disability, which I assume is the case. But if you really want to take the time to make your content better for people to watch, you probably should be listening to the people that are criticizing you and trying to give you advice on your fucking content. And the only reason why you even blew up was you just making fucking dumb tempo videos on YouTube shorts that aren't even deserving to being blown up anyway. Especially considering the fact that most of the tempo edits that you do are completely just reused clips that you use over and over again so you can get yourself to blow up. Nevertheless, these are my personal thoughts and criticisms about her video editing. But nevertheless, I think I should get to the conclusion of this one particular chapter. So, what have we learned? Foxy makes poorly made reaction videos that don't have any form of transformative content, and due to her reaction videos not having any reaction within them, it will just put her viewers to sleep or they'll just be more intrigued in the video that they're watching instead of her reaction. And she won't bother to edit her videos or at least make them interesting or put any kind of effort into her content. Reaction videos are by themselves lazy content, but this is by definition the laziest type of content I have ever came across. And I don't know how she managed to make reaction videos even lazier. I mean, to be fair with Foxy, at least it's not as bad as Jason Derulo, where he just reuses the same reactions that he does on every single YouTube short that he makes. Also, for those who don't know who Jason Derulo is, it's basically just some YouTube Shorts freebooter who makes reaction videos on his YouTube Shorts, which he doesn't even fucking react to, it's just him showing the video that he found on other, some other social media website with his own music on it. And it's unbelievably sad that she thinks this is going to revitalize her channel into something people will enjoy. For a 2k sub channel, I don't think you're supposed to be getting 10 views per week. But nevertheless, one thing I can say for sure is that if Foxy doesn't try to make content that will benefit her in the future, one thing's for sure is that her channel will be buried 6 feet under It reminded as a staple to never do what she did. Hey, what's going on guys? Winter here. Today, I am finally doing my second video with Iris Hyacinth. I know it's on Foxy, and I did make a video on her about three months ago, but screw it, we're doing it again. Mainly, this part is basically about her pretty much ignoring criticism and supporting pedophiles. So this is a better version of what I didn't talk about in my Foxy video of Cyrix. From what I have found, there's no evidence of Wilson doing anything related to quote-unquote zoophilia, other than him admitting it on a community post. But I found pictures and a video of him making a CP tape out of someone while he was 19 and the girl was 14. When Wilson was having an argument with a minor named Noella the Number Blocks fan 2K8, Wilson decided to make a CP thing by making a video of her naked. There is also a re-upload of this on YouTube. For Iris Hyacinth's sake, I will not tell him to put the link in the description below. There's another 14 year old he did that shit to. The person's name is Sparkleshine Gamer 2K7, with a video called Sierra Shows Sparkleshine Gamer 2K7 as a bikini. The contents of this video show someone named Sierra forcing a 14 year old to take off their clothes. Wilson did make another kind of video this way, but essentially someone, that being Emmanuel Thomas, stalking and sexually harassing her. When one of her main critics, Mr. Blocky, confronted her defending zoos and pedos, she responded with the, it's in the past argument. Unless you consider being friends with the Zalfo Island. He's not a Zalfo Island anymore, dude. You've been up his past. She lies about her defending the pedo in question, then she cried harassment and asked another YouTuber to block him from his comment section. Since then, she likes to argue that her defense of a zoo was in the past, but after caught lying, she would continue to cry victim. Another thing I have about Foxy is when she was defending someone named Vinny, a person who shared the nudes of a child on his community tab, and acts like it's drama that needs to be swept under the rug. After her critic Mr. Blocky had essentially called the route for supporting Vinny, she would try her best to censor her critics. When the backlash had gotten too much for Foxy, she would then make a post on her community tab, essentially changing her opinion on Vinny. Even then, her opinion change was still given criticism for good reasons. Try taking notice on her post of how she also changed her opinion, quote unquote, for her own good, not solely because she thinks it's fucked up of what Vinny really did. I did make a video on Vinny in like March of 2023, but that's seemingly unimportant because this video is mainly about Foxy. Anyways, that's going to be it for my part of this video. My apologies if it's really short, but I know how long anticipated this video is. Comment and like and subscribe to me and Iris Hyacinth, and I'll see you guys next time. Wait a second, stop.
Stop the music! This is literally Iris Hyacinth's channel, not yours. Don't display the outro again. Uh, I plead the fifth. Hey, 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 what's up, guys? It's Iris Hyacinth 220. Today's video, we're gonna be reacting to, um, uh, to, uh, Lion, Lion Animation Doesn't Respect the Dead by Marco Loplushny. But before we start this video, make sure to not harass this user and anybody. This is for criticism purposes only. But anyway, guys, let's get right into the video. What's going on, you beautiful people? My name is Thorne, and today we're going to be talking about someone by the name of William the Editor, also known as William. She is a gotcha tuber and very toxic person from the short time I spent talking to her on one of my friends of friends' server. From spamming a skull emoji, when my friend was talking about his grandmother's passing, to where she spammed when I was trying to defend his friend's actions when she purposely pissed him off. Now, let's talk about her content. Her content is straight up garbage. It is literally just Friday Night Funkin' mixed with gotcha life. It is un- Agreed. Original and makes me want to blow up some people in Postal 4, no regrets. I will leave a link in the video's description so you can make your own opinions about her videos because I don't want that cancer shit saved on my computer. I'll tolerate Jetta's shitty content because I know she'll delete it, but I'm not going to stomach Lillian's content onto my laptop. Let's talk about my experiences while talking to her. For the short amount of time of speaking to her, she was really fucking annoying and purposely tried to get my friend riled up. Because of her actions, she also got me riled up. Do you really think I would let my friend get harassed by someone? No, just because I'm not a good person doesn't mean I'm not a good friend. She's a big bully. My main gripe is that she tries to get under people's skin and thinks that there are no repercussions to those actions, but there are. And this is one of the repercussions, having a scripted video out of you. Go ahead. Play the victim, like you always do. Do you really think I care about your feelings after what you did to my friend? I truly don't think you understand the gravity of this situation. You literally laughed at someone mourning the loss of someone close to them. How fucking depraved of attention are you to do that shit? In conclusion, Lillian is a piece of shit that shouldn't have Discord access at all, because all she'll do is get under people's skin and try to troll them, failing more miserably to child protective services here in America. There might be a two part where I actually get into a call with my friend and where we talk about the shit Lillian did to him. That is at a later date. This has been Mark and Plushies signing off. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video, whenever that comes out. Bye. <laughs> Okay, that's uh, all for the video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next one. Bye. Let's capitalize on one of the biggest principles of Foxy's drama, her false flagging channels. It's kind of a weird explanation, but you'll understand why this is a chapter. One of the dramas that Foxy was entangled in was with a small YouTuber by the name of Scoobs, who formerly went by Wub Cookie Jaleo, or Sanic Die Troll Hog. When Foxy was in a drama with them, they basically had made a video on Foxy just showing her face throughout the whole video. Although the video wasn't that bad considering she shows her face anyway on her YouTube videos, which she even admits herself, Foxy had discovered the video and I guess she got mad enough to send a false privacy complaint to the person. Now what privacy complaints do is if someone feels like their private information was leaked to the public, they have the right to file a privacy complaint to YouTube to have it settled accordingly hence a privacy complaint. According to YouTube, after a complaint is filed and accepted, YouTube will give the uploader the opportunity to remove and edit private information within their video. They will be given 48 hours to complete the action on the complaint, and if the video is removed within those 48 hours, the complaint filed will be closed. If the potential privacy violation remains on the site after 48 hours, the complaint will be queued for review by the YouTube team. After presumably 48 hours had passed, the video got taken down from YouTube, and this was enough to rile up a lot of controversy to her name. Quite enough so to where another critic by the name of Mr. Nubis Returns had made another video highlighting Foxy's poor decision choices. Well, it turns out one month later, this channel is generally going worse and is generally trying to summon people over making videos that was literally only five seconds long. She showed her face in her goddamn reaction videos before this video happened, so it's public information. Why I'm still covering her face? Because like I said, she is trying to strike videos down. This person that made the five second video is lucky that he got it back. After Foxy was able to get that video taken down from YouTube, she was acting all smug about the situation, laughing about how she got it taken down and boasting it publicly on her YouTube community tab, by saying, hopefully that will teach him a lesson for messing with me. Nobody messes with me and gets away with it. She even had the courtesy to say, karma is a bitch. Foxy had apologized about getting the word doxing wrong when someone showed her face in the video, and said that that mistake that she made will help her grow as a person in the future. Although she apologized, I'm not really one to believe that she changed, considering that she literally took someone's video down due to them showing her face without her permission. A little later on, we had found out that this person who made the initial video was able to get their video reinstated and back on YouTube, 
which is honestly very lucky considering that YouTube tends to double down on their bad decision making. I guess the YouTube team even knew that Foxy was in the wrong. Another commentator by the name of Omega Centurion had made a video called Foxy the Fox 110 is a total son of a bitch, where he highlights that Wub Cookie Jaleo got his video unfairly taken down and provides evidence of how Foxy was the one that took it down herself. And basically, she basically took down the video, which literally would be believable consider how fucking ignorant she is toward emoji marbles faults and shit and considering how ignorant she fucking is foxy the fox 110 if you're watching this video which you probably aren't stop false striking people in my own opinion when you do that that's honestly fucking horrible like why would you false report something Foxy herself would react to the video, but a little later, Omega would get his video taken down and receive a community guideline strike for hate speech. Even though he wasn't displaying any form of hate speech in his video whatsoever, even if he did say a slur in his video, I'm sure YouTube would have kept that video taken down if he really was saying hate speech. Thankfully, he was able to get his video appealed and back up. However, YouTube would give him an age restriction on his video. Still bad, but nevertheless, it's better than a community guideline strike. So let me get this straight. The same person who publicly puts pictures of their own face on YouTube for the public to see is willing to abuse the YouTube privacy complaint system to falsely get people's videos taken down. What the fuck is your problem? Are you insane? Do you have brain damage? Okay, well, wait, she actually does have brain damage, but... But it does bring up a good point. If Foxy is willing to abuse the YouTube privacy complaint system to take down videos, even if their face was public to begin with, it illustrates quite well how much of a fucking pussy she is. This situation honestly raises a concern. If Foxy is willing to abuse the YouTube privacy complaint system to take down videos, it definitely shows signs of insecurity and in coping. Like, if you didn't want people to use your face in their videos, then why share it publicly online? Like, it's common fucking sense, Foxy. Also, according to YouTube, if they were to catch Foxy sending false privacy complaints, she could get terminated. However, YouTube never seems to really enforce that rule, so even if they did, they probably wouldn't care. Here's the thing, nobody is perfect, hell, I'm not perfect either, but you don't need to be taking down people's videos where they show your face, which was your own fucking fault. If you didn't want people sharing your face online, then don't share your face online. It's that simple. And here's another thing, why do you have to ask for permission to use your face in their videos? Like, you make it public information. I think that's completely unfair, since you put your face publicly on the internet should let your critics to have the right to show it on screen. And half of the time, nobody's even making fun of you for your face. We actually try to criticize on what you're doing wrong, and still a year later, you haven't changed. Your content shows that, your community tabs show that, and it basically everything on your channel just shows that you haven't changed a single bit. Imagine going out your way to completely false flag someone on YouTube after they give you criticism. What a complete and utter loser. A while ago when I was just editing this video, I got notified by fellow allies of mine that Foxy's channel was terminated. The channel termination reason was listed for spam and deceptive practices. How ironic, as soon as I start talking about her doing spam and deceptive practices in this video, she gets banned for the exact same reason. Man, I really might be the executioner of YouTube. But in my personal opinion, that's not the only reason why I believe she got terminated. Another reason why I believe she got rightfully terminated was because she would do reaction videos and not even transform the content she was reacting to. So she would essentially re-upload the video, but the main difference with that reaction content is that she just have a face cam on and not really say anything. Foxy has taken notice of her channel termination and has expressed her dissatisfaction on Discord, but it wouldn't take too long until Foxy had created a new channel on October 19th, 2023, and made a video basically explaining her plans for her new channel, basically saying that she doesn't plan to make any form of reaction content or discuss anything related to drama anymore due to her channel being terminated. She also says she vows to upload two videos a day and not six like she did beforehand. I'm just gonna be doing my other videos except for drama related videos. I'm not gonna do proxy reacts videos anymore. But I'm still gonna do approval videos and flute videos. But I'm, just not, but I'm not gonna do two and all experience videos anymore. And also I'm gonna be only re-uploading two videos a day from now on. 
but to be honest, this is a good step up for her content. Making two videos a day instead of six videos a day is a good step for your channel so you can be a cool kid once again. It's kind of sad that you had to get your channel terminated to realize what you did was wrong, especially when you've had so many people criticize you for these exact same reasons that YouTube had terminated you for. This shit obviously came to bite her on the ass, and I don't really care about her being upset that she lost it. So, uh, retracting my previous statement regarding a Foxy and her termination, looks like she submitted an appeal to YouTube and her channel got reinstated. Wow. Despite evidence of Foxy making spam content and just making non-transformative content just right in front of their face, they still let her thrive on the platform. It's quite disappointing, if anything, and illustrates the lack of care YouTube has for its creators making content, and instead just backing up people who actually freeboot and steal content. Foxy also said that they're going to continue doing reaction videos, but instead they're going to still not do drama-related content. Take notice that as soon as Foxy like got her channel deleted, she would vow to not make that type of content, but when she suddenly gets it back, she thinks it's suddenly okay to do it again. She quite clearly knows what she's doing is wrong and doesn't really care to fix it, but only when her channel is under the crosshairs of YouTube, that's when she'll care enough to fix it. It's actually kind of fucking sad. Now, we're gonna talk about one of the most consistent problems that she has, hypocrisy. A lot of the time, the hypocrisy argument is kind of overused, especially in the firm of critical commentary, but Foxy is the perfect example of someone who will say one thing at one moment, and at the exact same time, because she thinks she can get away with it, do the exact opposite. A walking, talking, fucking contradiction. I mean, from her, you probably wouldn't anticipate that she ever does this, considering that from her words, she wants to try and remain a drama-free channel, which is a complete lie, considering that drama is what makes her upload a ton on her channel anyway. Now to kickstart this absolute gem of a chapter. I want to build some context for you. One small commentary channel named Mr. Blocky was very critical of Foxy, and would criticize her for the content she was producing, and criticizing her for supporting zoophiles and pedophiles like Wilson Perez, and degenerates like Vinny who shared CP on his YouTube community tab. Not only for the controversy she was stemmed into, but also for her content, which was ultimately the biggest talking point of her criticism. The intention for these videos were to criticize Foxy of what she was doing wrong and lead her on the right track so she doesn't become too unhinged. The criticism that he levied against her and her content were fair and constructive, and if anything from a genuine critic, he wanted to see her try and strive for some improvement. However, Mr. Blocky would instead be greeted with his criticism falling under deaf ears, and her ignoring the genuine advice that he's giving to her, <laughs> as expected. But for this chapter, we're gonna focus on one specific part on his third video on Foxy. This specific part I'm gonna be mentioning in this video was a small snippet of his character shooting Foxy's character with the gun. As you can imagine, that part of the video is what causes Foxy to be upset with Mr. Blocky. A few months later, after the drama had died down, Foxy had made a request towards someone else on YouTube, basically asking them to make a killing video out of Mr. Blocky. It wasn't hard for him to find the video either, since they tagged him in it, and he noticed that Foxy replied with a comment that said, Thank you for doing my request. So, for that portion, Mr. Blocky simply just comments lol in the comment section and she immediately goes into defensive mode. Foxy made a community post basically trying to address the situation of what happened and she tried to make excuses for what she did by lying about it and downplays that the video wasn't as the same level as a killing video, which is hilarious considering that if you take a look into her comment section of the post, she would be liking comments essentially saying that he deserves to have a killing video made on him. I don't think it should be hard to understand why this is fucking ridiculous, and if you put the clips side by side, they are quite similar enough to where they both depict something to be shot. You can't argue that it's not a killing video, Foxy, because it is. When she was eventually criticized in this situation, Foxy tried to morally grandstand about how a video just shooting a TV isn't within the criteria of a killing video, even though if Mr. Blocky were to do the same thing, she probably would be losing her fucking shit. Not to mention, she also condones this one fan constantly making posts about him beating up Mr. Blocky. 
When she was rightfully criticized of this controversy, she started to cover her tracks by deleting any posts that she made on the whole thing, even the comment where she even requested the killing video to be made on Mr. Blocky, and had left a comment on that one video essentially saying that she was getting attacked and she was getting stressed out from it. Yes, Foxy, you sure were being attacked. I think it's impressive, really, of how much you are given a pass from the Go Anime community of not having your controversies brought up, whether if it's defending pedos and zoos and doing a lot more terrible shit. But when you eventually get criticized for what you did wrong, you flip 180 and complain how you're being attacked by people and you're stressed out. You're a fucking pussy. Foxy has spent a long time trying to build her platform on YouTube, and making quite a name out of herself. Trying to construct her groundwork from bits of wood and stone has finally achieved what she had long desired. She'd finally grown a chance to build a fanbase. However, as I discussed briefly in this video, Foxy has displayed signs that she's more focused with her image rather than the truth. After circumstances began to materialize, she would finally resort to methods such as flagging people down in order to avoid what people thought of her critically. She would also use people's limited perspective on past circumstances to twist a version of events and exploit people's sympathies. A 9-11 joker, cyberbully, piece of shit. After she got called out for this situation, she changed tones and switched to trying to move on from the past, although her most prevalent critics wouldn't take her word for it. This is because to truly move forward, you have to believe that the person has changed from their past self, and the simple truth that Foxy hadn't, and it was proven time and time again. We all want to move on from our past, and we don't want it held over us, but if we don't acknowledge those mistakes, we are prone to repeating it. Getting caught up in the past is like quicksand. The more you struggle, the more it seems to consume you. But you can't leave at your own leisure. You need somebody to help you. While we humans enjoy giving criticism and our two cents on a situation, we are often defensive when we get criticized. Criticism is a very essential part when it comes to being a content creator, and it can help you grow in the long run. When it comes down to actual incidents she was involved with in YouTube, the criticisms that Foxy had received over the last year had been useless. Whether if it's a concern of her content and video editing, defending zoos and pedos, inability to handle criticism, false flagging, hypocrisy, and the eventual lead up to her channel termination. Where she lies about doing certain promises on her channel since she got the channel back. In short, Foxy has demonstrated that her past is still present, and she had not matured or learned from any of these conflicts. With all the criticism that Foxy had received, she would apologize for some of the things that she had did, but it was difficult to trust her word. It felt as if she was obliged to do it in order to maintain her reputation. If nobody had criticized her over the last year for this whole situation, would she have continued to ignore it? That is a very good question. This whole story is disappointing, if anything, because it's a clear highlight that Foxy only cared about how people thought and not how people felt. Foxy's past is the present, but unlike a year ago, we have more knowledge about her controversies now. If I had to say any last words before I leave you all, Foxy needs to do other things in her life to do, and she needs to delete her channel now. Anyways, I've been yours truly, Iris Hyacinth, and I'll be seeing you soon.